Hey, what's up you guys? It's Dorothy and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thank you for stopping by. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Comment down below what you want to see in the future. Click that subscribe button and don't forget to turn on my post notifications so you get notified every single time I post a video. In today's video, we are going to go into Good Girl Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. We are going to go into chapter 16. Yeah, chapter 16. So yeah, let's get right into it. And as always, don't forget your daily dose of Dr. Pepper. This video may contain sensitive topics and foul language. If you do not wish to continue, please click off of the video now. This is your only warning. All right, so for starters, before we get into chapter 16, we've got this, which says Monday, three days missing. Chapter 16, Pip didn't sit at the front anymore. There, That's where she used to sit, in this classroom at the very, at this very time when it was Elliot Ward standing at the front talking them through the economic effects of World War II. Now it was Mr. Clark, the new history teacher who'd come in after winter break to take Mr. Ward's place. He was young, maybe not even 30, with brown feathered hair and trimmed and a trimmed beard that was mostly ginger. He was eager and more than a little enthusiastic about his PowerPoint slide transitions, sound effects too. It was a little too early on a Monday morning for exploding hand grenades though. Not that Pip was really listening. She was sitting in the back corner. That This was her place now, and Connor was beside her. That hadn't changed, except for he'd been late today, and now he was j jiggling his leg as he sat there, also not paying attention. Pip's textbook was standing up on her desk, open to page 237, but she wasn't actually taking notes. The textbook was a shield hiding her from Mr. Clark's eyes. Her phone was propped up against the page, earphones plugged in, and a cable tucked into the front of her sweater, the wire snaking down one sleeve so her earbud, earbuds rested in her palm, fully disguised. It must look to Mr. Clark like Pip was resting her chin in her hand as she scribbled down dates and percentages, but really she was scrolling through Calamity Party files. A new wave of emails with attachments had come in late last night and this morning. World must have started, word must have started to spread about Jamie, but still no photos in the location and the time frame she needed. Pip glanced up five minutes until the bell, long enough to go through another email. The next one was from Hannah Ravens from Pip's English class. Hey Pip, it said, someone told me this morning you're looking for Connor's missing brother and that he was at the calamity on Friday. This video is super embarrassing. Apparently I sent it to my boyfriend at 9.49 when I was super drunk. Please don't show it to anyone, but there's a guy in the background I don't recognize. See you at school. A prickle of nervous energy crawled up up the back of Pip's neck. The time frame and a guy Hannah didn't recognize, this could be it. The break the break, Pip thumbed, thumped on to the attached file and pressed play. The sound blared into her ear, loud music, chattering voices, bursts of jeering and cheering that must have come from that beer pong game in the dining room. But this video was taken in the living room. Hannah's face took up most of the frame as she pointed the phone down at herself from an outstretched arm. She was leaning against the back of the sofa opposite the one Javison was sitting on at 9.38 p.m the end of which was just visible in the background. Hannah was on her own. The dog filter on Instagram applied to her face. Pointy brown ears buried her in her in her hair, following her as she swung her head around. The, the new Ariana Grande song was playing and Hannah was lip-syncing to it very dramatically. Air grabs and eyes screwed shut when, she, when the song demanded it. That, this wasn't a joke, was it? Pip kept watching, searching the scene. Behind Hannah's head, she recognized two of the faces back there, Joseph Power and Katie Juckis, and judging by the positions on the sofas, they must have been standing in front of the fireplace, which hadn't quite made it into the shot. They were talking to a girl with her back to the camera, long, dark, straightened hair, jeans that could be dozens of people Pip knew. This clip was almost finished, the blue line creeping along the progress bar until toward the end, six seconds to go. And that was when two things happened at the exact same time. The girl with the long brown hair turned and started to walk away from the fireplace toward Hannah's camera. Simultaneously from the other side of the frame, a person crossed toward her walking quickly. So all you really caught was the blur of the shirt and, and the head floating head above a burgundy shirt. Jamie. As the two figures were about to meet, Jamie reached out to tap the girl on the shoulder. The video ended, shit. Pip whispered into her sleeve, drawing Connor's attention. She knew exactly who the girl was, what he hissed. Someone? 
huh? The bell rang and the sound sliced right through Pitt making her wince. He was, her hearing was always more sensitive on not enough sleep. In the hall, she said, packing her textbook into her bag and untangling herself from her earphones. She stood up and shouldered her bag, missing whatever homework Mr. Clark was assigning them. Being at the back of the room meant being the last to leave. Waiting impatiently for everyone else to spill out of the classroom, Connor followed Pip into the hall as she guided him over to the far wall. What is it? Connor asked. Pip unwound her, her earphones, jamming them in one by one into Connor's pointy ears. Ouch, be careful, would you? He closed his hands around his ears to keep the sound in as Pip held her phone up for him and pressed play. A tiny smirk flickered across his face. Wow, that's embarrassing, he said after a few seconds. Is that why you wanted to show me? Obviously not, she said. Wait for the end. And when it came, his eyes narrowed and he said, Stella Chapman? Yup, Pip tugged the earphones out of his ears too hard, making him ouch again. Stella Chapman must be the someone Jamie spotted at the memorial and followed to the party. Connor paused. Stella, why would Jamie know Stella? What what do we do, we do now? Find her at lunch and talk to her ask how they knew each other and what they talked about why jamie followed her okay good connor said and his face changed slightly like the muscles beneath the shifted loosened this is good right yeah pip said though good might not be the right word but at least we're finally getting somewhere stella oh hi stella replied mouth full of twix she narrowed her almond shaped brown eyes her perfect cheekbones made even more made even sharper by the bronzer she swiped over her tan skin Pip had already known exactly where to wait for her. They were, they were locker neighbors. Chapman was six places over from Fitz and Bowie, and they greeted each other most mornings. Their hellos always bookend by the awful screech of Stella's locker door. Pip was ready for it this time. As Stella opened the door and deposited some books inside, What's up? Stella's eyes trailed over to Pip's shoulders where Connor was standing, boxing her in. He looked ridiculous, hands on his hips, like he was some kind of bodyguard. Pip flashed him an angry look until he stepped back and relaxed. You on your way to lunch? asked Pip. I was wondering if I could talk to you about something. Er, yeah, I was heading to the cafeteria. What's wrong? Nothing, Pip said casually, walking Stella down the hall. Just wondered whether I could borrow you for a few minutes first. In here, Pip halted, pushing open the door to the math classroom she already checked was empty. Why? The suspicion was clear in Stella's voice. My brother's missing, Connor butted in, hands going to his hips again. Was he trying to look intimidating? But it wasn't working for him at all. Pip glared at him again. Normally, he was good at reading her eyes. You might have heard that I'm looking into his disappearance, Pip said. I just have a few questions about Jamie Reynolds. I'm sorry, Stella shuffled uncomfortably, picking at the ends of her hair. I don't know him, but Connor started, but Pip cut him off. Jamie was at the calamity party on Friday. It's currently the last time he was seen, she said. I found a video in which Jamie comes over to talk to you at the party. I just want to know what you talked about, even if you don't really know him, that's all. Stella didn't answer, but her face said everything she wouldn't, her eyes wide and lines wrinkling her smooth forehead. We really need to find him, Stella, Pip said gently. He could be in trouble, real trouble, and anything that happened that night might help us figure out where he's gone. It's it's life or death, she said, refusing to look Connor, to look Connor's way. Stella chewed her lip, eyes spooling as she made her mind up. Okay, she said. And that's going to be the uh, the end of part one to chapter 16. I will make a part two because this chapter is long. So I will see you in part two. Bye.